Hang on, do you guys see that? You see? Tables are different. I, I switched the tables. I'll talk more about that later, but it's Friday, so. So this week is a lot, this week is basically all experimental week. I've been trying a lot of different things and strategies in the classroom. I'm just like throwing a lot of different things at the wall just to see what sticks. I'm um, kind of preparing for next year, just kind of trying to see what's gonna work. So let me just show you here. Now the tables are oriented this way. And now all students can see the whiteboard. No, none of them have to have their back turned. So that was a that was a decision that I made, and I feel like it worked pretty well. And this week, if you haven't watched, if you didn't watch yesterday's vlog, um, I started Classroom Dojo this week, and I'm liking it so far. I'm really liking what I'll be able to do with it next year. It's kind of a bit late in the game to really utilize all of its features, such as like the parent communication and stuff. But like, you can even take pictures of student work samples and like send them to parents and. The, it's got a lot of potential, so I'm, I'm really kind of like piloting it for the rest of the school year, seeing what works, what doesn't work. Someone commented on my video yesterday that they don't actually let, like, show the kids um, their points, and also she doesn't let it, and also she said that she does not, um, she does not broadcast everybody's points for everyone to know. And um, I'm still playing with how I wanna use it and um, what's most developmentally appropriate for a five and six year old. I think maybe taking points away might be counterproductive to what I'm trying to do. So on Monday, I'm not taking any points away, it's only adding points. So I, I found that taking points away kind of got kids upset and so I, that's not what I want. I don't want to upset kids. This is supposed to be positive. So no more taking away points. It's just positive. I'm seeing positive stuff, so points all around, that sort of thing, trying to promote the positive behavior versus, oh, negative, oh, negative. So that's something I'm gonna try out differently on Monday is the positive only. And then um, also like being very clear with like, okay, you get this many points, so this is your reward. So I'm thinking about, I've got like a prize box of like knickknacks and stuff and little pencils and erasers and stuff like that. And I think I'm gonna set a point total of, I don't know, 20. And if you get 20 points, you get a prize box or something. I don't know if that's, because then what happens if a kid only gets 18, they're gonna be upset. So if you guys have any ideas on how to like point systems and what they should earn. Maybe my students are still at an age developmentally where they get very upset if they aren't included. Like I can't take two or three students, like give them a reward because other kids won't understand. Oh, I didn't get it this time, maybe next. They're having a hard time with that. Like there's nothing wrong with that. That's not good or bad. That's just where they are developmentally. Um, they're, they're not in a place where they can go, man, I'm gonna try better next time. I didn't quite get it this time, but maybe next time I will. So I have some that can do that, but when you have at least half your class that that isn't there yet, it makes some it makes certain rewards very difficult. You have to, it has to mostly be tier one rewards where it's like universal. Everybody has a really good opportunity to get this reward if certain conditions are met. Um, and then even if students are misbehaving and acting up, then there still needs to be hope for them. Like that's the key. Something that my mentor told me my first year of teaching was, you can never take away their hope. For example, I know that sounds bad, but for example, like if you have a clip chart or any kind of behavior center, if it's in the morning, you can't be like, okay, you've lost your this, like period. Because then what do they have? What hope do they have? They always have to have, there always has to be a way for them to fix their mistake or, or do better. Otherwise there's no incentive to do better. So um, yeah, I'm gonna keep thinking about it over the weekend, seeing how I wanna continue to utilize Class Dojo, but that's like the big change this week. And so far, so good. Also, I'm wearing like my favorite outfit ever today, so I'm really feeling myself, feeling pretty good. My <laughs> Often when I dress nicer and, and, and put the effort to, to, to wear my suspenders and everything, it puts me in a type of mood. So, so men, I know it seems like we might have less options than our, than our female counterparts, but if you uh, give bow ties and suspenders a try, it can open up a whole new world, trust me. Then you can just incorporate colored pants, 
Okay, as you guys know, one of my like passions and things that I'm very, very confident in and something that I love doing is small group. So I'm gonna real quick break down for you how I've been doing my guided reading lessons for the past week and a half or so and how I'm gonna do it the rest of the year. Um, traditionally, small, tradition, traditionally, I do small groups in four groups and I do like four rotations or, or something like that, but it's the end of the year and I made a tweak and I, I, really like what I'm, I really like how it's working. I'm doing half and half of the class. So let me just kind of explain it to you. I'm gonna write it down just so you can get a better picture of what I'm doing. Okay, so it's a one hour block of time and I split it half and half. So for example, from 9 to 9.30, I am personally working with the green and blue team while yellow and red, they're on computers. So I'm working with green and blue team, yellow and red on computers. And here's what I do for the first 15 minutes, green and blue team are on are with me on the blue carpet and we are reading one of those little leveled reader books those guided reading books we're reading that together we're, a, we're asking and answering questions about the text and we're solving the um we're decoding that sort of thing and then for this next 15 minutes it's about it's 12 to 15 minutes give or take we go back to our table and we write about reading so I give them a writing prompt about what we just read and they do that for 15 minutes. Then we flip flop and I do, I work with yellow and red team while green and blue team are on computers. And for yellow and red team, we're doing the same thing except for we're just reading a, we're just reading a lower level book and I'm asking them to do a little bit less with their writing. So this takes up an hour and it's super structured and it's a change of pace. Um, sometimes you just gotta switch things up just for the sake of your classroom climate. but. Um, I really enjoy doing it that way and it's if you're first if you're brand new to small group instruction and you're a little bit weary about starting it it's a great way to start because you only have to do you only basically have to plan two lessons half the class and half the class it's not as daunting as planning it's not as daunting as planning four small group lessons and rotations and centers it's just half and half now granted you got to have enough computers or technology to make it work but if you do All right, I gotta get out of here because Kristen and I have a date tonight. We're going to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Guardians 1 was like one of my favorite movies ever, but I gotta leave you with a funny story. Um, yesterday, I overheard a conversation from my students and I, I don't know what started the conversation, but all I heard was, I don't wanna sit by you, man, you eat your boogers. And the boy goes, I don't do that anymore. He goes, nah, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Like there was a inter like there was an in there was a interaction at some point earlier in the school year where this girl had saw this boy eat his boogers and he is he is referring back to that time and how now he's a changed person he no longer eats his boogers but at one point he did anyway I had to laugh out loud when I heard that and but <laughs> sometimes you do just have to laugh some you know you got to forget sometimes when you're in the thick of instruction or you're having a tough time or your the kids aren't listening and they're being loud you forget that they're kids and they're funny um, but. What can you do? So anyways, I hope you guys had a great week. Mine was pretty good overall. Winding down the rest of the school year. Keep fighting. Keep in there, you guys. We're almost done. We're almost through this. Find your gift. Share it with the world. And remember, you are worth it. See you tomorrow.